hello so this is just a quick video to go through the requirements list for the mixed media magic um, which we're starting next month 16th of august so it's not actually very far away now um, and i just wanted to go through the sort of things i'll be using um, and actually show you some of them so that you can see what I mean because um, you know when so some things when I put down you know silk screen I know for me 10 15 years ago I would I really wouldn't have known what I meant by that I would have had a vague idea but I could easily have got the wrong thing so I wanted to run through them with you to make sure that we're talking um, about the right things and singing off the same skateboard I know that's not right but it's pretty it's pretty close anyway it's a good metaphor singing off the same skateboard so let's go through and you don't have to get all of these straight away you can watch the videos first see what looks interesting to you and then go and get them or also see if you have anything that might do the same sort of stuff so let's look at substrates first um paper wise um I will be using layout paper. I use this an awful lot. I use this probably more than fabric now um, because this is just brilliant to stitch. Um, it's a 45 gram weight paper, um, but it's very, so it's quite thin. It stitches through without making holes. Um, that's when I, I, I'm backing it on something. Um, it's uh, the paper that architects use. Um, to draw their large plans on um, because those need to be folded and they don't want to be too bulky for the builders to take out and site but it needs to be strong so it really is an excellent paper so i'll be using layout paper and i will be mostly using this sort of size which is which is a3 you know that's a good size for making materials for me i've only got one sheet at the moment because it's being delivered and i didn't want to nick any out of the shop for that reason um and then the other thing ah oh, you know i've got some here I've got some here. I've just been hunting for some high and low. And actually, that's layout paper. So that's more layout paper. So I've got more than I thought. And then copier paper is also excellent. Um, not as good to stitch through, although still perfectly okay. I've stitched a lot of quilts using copier paper before I discovered layout paper. I'm just going to move the camera because I can see I'm going to get myself mixed up about where it is. There we are. Uh, still a bit mixed up. What if I move that way? What if, um, this is, this is, get used to this. <laughs> I'll try harder. That's it. It's because everything's in reverse for me. Okay, so we've got A3 copier paper. I've got a mixture of just plain cheap copier paper. I've also got some really rather nice laser copier paper, which I got when it was in a sale years ago. Um, I don't use it as much now because I've discovered the layout paper and love it so much. But this is great for um, lots of work, brilliant for collage, and you can stitch through that as well. And then there is, and that's what I thought I'd got out, but I didn't. But here is some. There is deli paper. Looking a bit messy here. Oh, fantastic. A print. Wasted. Okay, so this is deli paper. So this is slightly bigger because I get this from America. This is slightly bigger than um, A3. You can see there. That's A3 behind it, so it's slightly bigger. And as you can also see, it's transparent or not fully transparent it is semi-transparent um and i like using that again it's very strong um it will take wet media um so i can add dye to this unfortunately baking parchment greaseproof paper from the uk won't do that um, but this stuff does beautifully um so i can add wet media and dye to it and i can layer up transparencies with that which i really enjoy doing i seem to have um a bit pile of materials of things that's funny what i find in my drawers anyway so that's that's deli then i've got i think that's more copy of paper i think this might be the laser paper that feels like about 120 grams it's quite it's quite heavy and then i've got cartridge paper um so i've got various weights of that i've got quite a thin one which is 100 grams which is great for printing on and fabulous for collage and then i've got a couple of different weights of that i think one of these might just be card i'm never quite sure um but i've got i think about 140 grams in a 220 which gives me some good options 140 grams plus um which i think is 90 pounds um in american in american um money but i'm not sure so don't quote me on that look it up if you just put into google change grams to pounds you'll you'll get the um you will get the change you'll get the change you'll get the conversion 
that is what I mean. Um, so I've got two different weights there and I've also got a little bit of watercolour paper which is 300 grams. So that's some really thick paper. That will work as a lovely substrate for making a collage on if I wanted to. But I also might want to print direct to this if I was doing something or work direct to this if I was doing something that I wanted to just frame but not stitch. Then there's brown papers. I mean, these are both packaging papers that have arrived from somewhere. Um, and these are great. These are great, probably from Amazon. These are great for printing. In fact, that's a really thick boy there. Um, so I've kept those and I've got a pile of... Um, here. These are also brown papers from Amazon. Um, I don't know if they do this one anymore, but I loved it when they did because it's kind of in a comes in it folds in an accordion um, so these are just big sheets of brown wrapping paper and that can be good fun to print on um, and nice and cheap and you can often just get that recycled if you can't get it recycled you can buy brown craft paper sea whites sell this kind of stuff um, so this is this is sea white's craft paper which is really nice to print on and i would say that is weight wise about the same as copier paper i'm guessing a bit but i'd sort of say 80 to 100 grams so that's really nice you could use cardi paper which is always lovely to print on um one of these sorts of packs can be quite nice this is um 20 sheets of 210 rag and fibre um, and I've got a various different colours in here or you can get packs from it is from cardypapers.com um, this one's got different colours um, I think I've got another one somewhere that's all different shades of blue so they're really nice and again this is quite heavyweight paper 210 grams but because this has rag in it cotton rag in it this can be really beautiful to stitch um you know this is this is lovely to stitch into so you might want to investigate that so this one is called rag and fiber i was thinking that was mitsuma but it's not so this one's just called rag and fiber paper um oh with banana leaf jute fiber and sugar cane fiber um if you just look for the rag paper um and i think the weights cardi do it in gosh I used to sell it and i used to know the weight like that now i can't remember um but any of the weights will be fine just the heavier weight you get the more stable it will be and then uh, there's black i've got some black paper well, this is actually black card that might be quite good fun to use some of our media on and try it and then i've got um and then we've all got rolls of stuff like this i don't even know what this is it's not baking parchment i don't think although it could be it's just out of a box and unlabeled but i can see it's trans semi-transparent so that can be good fun just to print up some of that when you're printing um, and use it up. And then I've got various um, found papers, which are lovely to print on. So I've just got some, oh, that was an old, that was a book of private eye that I got. Um, that I, and I often buy these from charity shops just to pull the pages out um, to use to print. Um, that's some old um, piano chords out of a... Uh, uh, teaching book and some music, ledger papers. Um, most of these, I think this came out of one of our old ledgers, which, you know, is classic. It's looking beautifully old and grotty. I don't know. Did it? What does that say up there? Twin not to, 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 no. Anyway, this is lovely. This is um, an old letter set catalogue um, that I have. If you've got anything like this that's really quite interesting, I would um, scan it and keep it or photograph it and keep, so you can keep it before you actually use it but these will all make lovely um things to print on with the um fonts in the background these again are just old book that feels like a magazine it's a bit shiny so it'd be interesting to see what that does that reminds me tracing paper can be good fun to print on this is again out of some old magazine or something um it's actually got some quite nice, ooh, it's got some very nice pictures. Might trim those out or take a photocopy again. Um, and just various bits like that. And then I've got, um, you can see I've already been, I've already been at it. Um, but this is a lovely old map because it's got linen on the back of it, um, like a scrim, um, which is wonderful for printing and pulling apart. I don't know whether they still make maps like that. But anyway, maps are something we all, we all like and enjoy printing on. 
So, and, and, or anything else you can think of. You just want some paper. Um, and to be honest with you, I frequently print on just one or two types of paper. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. You know, I've, I've tried to pull out a variety there. But if I'm honest about my own practice, I usually use layout and deli. And I don't really get much further than that. Um, fabrics. And again, I mostly use, this is just a small piece of it, but this is just um, the Optic White Cotton. Um, it's just a, a relatively cheap and it's, it's not got a huge thread count. So I can't remember what it is on this. I think it says on the website, but I can't remember what it says, what, what, this, what count this is. But it's low, which means, again, it's got an element of um, see-through. And what that means is when I use paints and dyes on it, they go through to the other side. So I get a really nice um, back to my fabrics as well. And sometimes the backs are even more exciting than the fronts. So what I don't want is a really high quality um, 200 count cotton. It will be beautiful and if that's what you've got, I mean, I've had them as well, you know, the lovely rolls from, um, completely forgotten from where, but you know, the Egyptian cottons. If you've got those, by all means use them, but they are unlikely to bleed through to the other side just because they're so dense. This stuff, I want to say 45, but I can't think it's 45 grams. Maybe it's 145. Maybe 45 doesn't even come into it. Um, but just a relatively cheap dyeing cotton. And I use that 90% of the time. Equally good. This is just a nice quality calico. I'm just looking for a bit of smoothness, really. I don't want this too rough. My cotton isn't either. Um, and this one's got a slight cream colour to it. So that's just going to give me a slight variety as I work on them. Other things, I've got some... Um, Silk organza, I seem to have it in several several different versions, and, and I'm not even sure that one is silk. But anyway, it's definitely orgasm. Orgasm. It's definitely orgasm. Sorry about that. It's definitely um, organza, or it could in fact be chiffon. It could be silk chiffon. Anyway, it's see-through. Both organza and chiffon are see-through. That, I think, might be silk chiffon. This is silk organza, you know, and really because it's labelled, I know what it is, that's even more transparent, um, and they can just be good, I'm going to put that back in the bag, not that it really matters to me what it is, you know, it did when I have to write those things out for sitting girls, but it doesn't now, I just want a transparency one, I will always go for natural fibres, um, if I possibly can, because then I know they'll take Procyon dyes, and although you know, there's a bit of argy-bargy about whether you can use Persian dye on silk. It certainly dyes silk beautifully. I think the query is about... Um, I'm not even sure what the query is about. It might be about its longevity. Anyway, I know it dyes silk because I've done it, so I'm quite happy with those. This is... These can be quite interesting if you've got some of these. This is a white-on-white... Fabric. Well, actually, it's more like cream on cream. Mm, I'm not so easy to show you this. Let me try and get some on the corner. Can you see? There's one you can see. This has got little flowers um, in the fabric. And they can, oh, and it's also got Milo's been wiping his nose on it. Sorry about that. Um, he used to bury his chews in it when he was a puppy. So some of my fabrics, if they go back that far, do have these slightly... Um, blood stained or mud stained bits but i'm not bothered about that so that can be quite interesting because in all probability the little white um flowers or the cream flowers are going to take dye differently to the main to the main fabrics so and that can be interesting and this is a similar sort of thing this is part of an old bed cover um duvet cover this is a damask um and you'll find lots of stuff if you go and google job lot old linen or something you'll find damasks you know there was a lot of tablecloths and things made out of again it's really hard for me. oh there we are beautiful you can see that pattern um and again when i dye that the um pattern and milo's <laughs> been nosing around in that one too um the pattern will take um the two different parts of the pattern will take the dye differently and then I've lastly, I've got, this is actually cotton duck, but I've also got artist canvas, just something fairly heavyweight. Um, and this can be quite nice to use. 
oh, if you were wanting to make a scroll or something like that, that could be a really interesting fabric to use. Or if you're wanting to make um, anything heavier weight, like um, a bag or something like that. So I would, you know, I might play with a bit of that as well. But again, most of the time, I just work with plain old cheap cotton fabric because it does what I need it to do. So let's put those down with those. Right. Okay, so that's our substrates. And with all of these, anything else you've got, you know, I've put linen on here, that will work beautifully. Really, I'm looking for um, fabrics that are natural, you know, so flax, rayon, linen, um, viscose, cotton, silk, um, they will all work with Procyon dye fine. Okay, so a selection of paintbrushes, it's fairly self-explanatory, but the ones that you um, need to make sure you've got are some fat mops like these, which we're going to be using for applying dye. We're not going to immersion dye anything. We're going to apply dye with brushes. Um, and so you need a nice fat moppy brush. These are one inch mops. That's an old System 3 one that I've had for about a decade. You can tell it's very well used. And it's, it's for rules a bit. A bit dodgy now but it's still fine um and i think this is one of the newer ones one of the um oh no that's not what we have now that was one we had a while ago a three quarters of an inch i think we've got um totally gone out of my head what we have now but anyway it doesn't matter you just want a one inch mop and you then want some flat brushes um that's a large flat brush that's a one inch flat really nice brush this is probably uh, no sorry that's a two inch no, that's a one and a half inch. Gosh. OK, so that's a three quarter inch and that's an inch. Right. That's a one and a half inch. That's an inch. That's a three quarter inch. Any of those are fine. And these are for applying mediums and paints um, because we don't want wet media are great with these mops. These are much easier to control when we've got something really viscous like a medium or a paint on. And then I would just have, I mean, I just have a jar. Well, I have several jars of brushes, actually. But this one is just a jar of um, other types and sizes of brushes. These are my littles. I've got another jar over there that is mediums and bigs. Um, but really, if you haven't got something like that, just, uh, just a set. I mean, one like this is fine. This just has three um, brushes in it. It just gives you some smaller brushes to play with. Uh, this one has got a slightly larger selection so you've got the smaller ones but you've also got a couple of slightly larger ones and you've got a couple of you've got two or three flats in there small flats um i mean if you just you can get sets of brushes all over the place um very easy to get hold of and you don't have to spend a fortune on those um what else have i got on my list here let's keep going down oh yes rollers I mean, you've probably all seen me use these rollers, and if you haven't, that I use these just such a lot of the time. Um, they're just a brilliant way of applying paint. Um, so you're going to want um, a couple of those. Um, the heads come off, so you can just get a couple of handles and a few heads, and you can just change the heads, wash the heads, and put them back on again. And you're going to want some sort of paint tray. I use these ones because they're washable and reusable, or you could use palette paper, which I do use sometimes, and that's great because then you can use the used palette paper for collage. Um, you're going to want a rubber brayer. Um, had all these all now. Something like this. Um, this is, I think, a one, two, that looks like a three inch one. One of my favorite, most of mine are three inch, but I do have the cutest little badger, very dirty, of a two inch one. Um, so you just want something like this. You don't need a massively expensive one. I find these ones with, um, rather than the wire handles, I just find these miles easier to use. I think they're a little bit more, but I think I, I might eventually have given away my wire handled ones because I just found them a bit, a bit of a nuisance. So you want a brayer. Um, these sorts of things that I'm talking about now are all just good investments. None are going to be massively expensive and they're all just good things to have in your art kit anyway. Silk screens. Okay. Um, you are going to need a silk screen. Now, silk screens and silk screens. You don't need to spend a lot on this and you do not want a high count again. So if you think we were talking about the count of the fabric, um, which refers to how many fibres per inch. So a 200 count cotton has 200 fibres in an inch, in a square inch. 
screen mesh is just the same um it's count is how many fibers there are in i'm not sure if it's an inch or a centimeter or what it is but it doesn't matter the higher the number the denser the screen the harder it is to get the paint or dye through so if you get yourself a high count screen you may struggle to get stuff through it first time i um, did screen printing i didn't get any prints i was so disappointed i went to a class i was so excited this is about 15 years or so ago i was so excited at the idea of doing screen printing and i just didn't get anything and i i really do think looking back the only thing that kind of been is the screens were just too high account mesh the high accounts of people that are doing sort of fine art printing where they want really tight detail because you can imagine if the if if the threads are farther apart you're just going to get more stuff going through and it's not going to be as sharp but in terms of what we're doing you are not going to notice the distance distance difference so these screens are both 43t I don't, i've forgotten what the t is um, but a 43t is a really good mesh i wouldn't go above um a 60 or 70 um i would stay at a, a 43 is ideal don't go above 60 or 70 if you've got screens check what the mesh on them is um and these ones i mean this is um one of the little marabou screens um they're very thin as you can see um, and I misuse mine horribly. I haven't sealed them or anything and they've been absolutely fine And they are just you know, they're just great because you don't you don't worry. You don't worry about about them um, You know, they're not they're not tens and tens of pounds. They're eight pounds fifty. So it's not such um, a big stress and then also these ones um, which are um, aluminium these are really nice again you don't have to well i never do take my edges you know those of you that are doing breakdown printing with me will talk a lot more about screens i've no i don't take the edges of my screen even if they're wood um for various reasons which I'll, I'll go through but these ones you don't need to because they're aluminium they're really lightweight um and they're very easy to clean, very easy to use. And again, this is a 43T. Um, so you will you will need a screen for some of the things that we're doing. But again, you could watch and wait and see what we're going to be doing with the screens and then decide. Um, and we're not using them. We're not going to be doing screen printing with them. We're, we're using them in a different way. And just decide if it's something that you think would be useful for you. Squeegees, um, you know, I mostly use credit cards. Um, I find those just really nice and easy. <laughs> and easy to use and I chop them into bits for little ones um, I have got some fabulous uh, these are my latest favorites I think these were um I can't remember what they were for does it say on it but I have a chance pure fine I think they were tile um, grouting tools or something like that anyway these are brilliant because they've got a handle on so I don't get my fingers as messy um so they're good and those were all off amazon these ones were two something like this these are tile spacers um these are cake icing tools anything like that will do you know you don't need one of these big boys at all um, you just want something that will go across your screen textile medium acrylic printing medium okay we're going to be using these to seal some of our media and these are actually what we're going to be putting um through through the screen um so you do want some of these um the acrylic printing medium um will work um on paper the textile medium works and is washable on fabric um so it depends what you want to do um you can use the textile medium on paper um, and it will work too um, but the acrylic printing medium if you use it on fabric it'll be fine unless you wash it but when you wash it the acrylic printing medium will partly disappear the textile medium is the one for fabrics they're both um, acrylics and those are both system three um, mediums I just bottle them up um, to make them a bit cheaper and so you don't have to buy such large quantities um, opaque fabric paint or acrylic paint so I'm going to be using um, my own paints um, I've got oh, just loads and loads of these these are all um, acrylic fabric paints 
um, and you and they are completely opaque and that is the important part for you as we're going to be working is to have um, something that is completely opaque so if you don't want to use fabric you don't need to use fabric paints you could just use ordinary acrylics but make sure the ones you're using are fully opaque you could mix acrylic paints with a fabric medium um, with this textile medium in fact if you wanted to um, to make a fabric paint to make your acrylic paint washable on fabric i don't find them as reliable as a dedicated fabric paint um, but that's up to you these the ones i make are all based on set color opaque um, which comes in little bottles like this. Um, and I mix all these colors using set of color opaque. So if you wanted to buy set of color, you could get that. Make sure you get the one that says opaque on it, not transparent, um, so that you can do all the techniques we're going to look at. So let me just stick those back in there. Procyon dye powder. Um, colors of your choice okay so that just comes in a little pot like this you're going to want another pot um, a jam jar would do anything with a watertight lid um, and just mix it up with just water so that you've got a liquid like this um, and we're going to use this as a dye as an ink um, just as a watercolor transparent medium um, and that I've written out for you a teaspoon and a little hot water and top up to 200 mils and store in a jar. You are going to need the obvious things like you're going to need a water pot, plenty of paper towels um, for blotting up, an apron, a protection for your table. I'm on a flip chart pad here. I always work on a flip chart pad. I find it just brilliant because as it gets saturated and dirty, I can peel papers off put them to one side, carry on. And when they're dry, I can just put them back on my table again. So I don't have to wash them, um, but they don't get wasted either. And of course, when they're fully used, I would just use them for collage. Um, what else? Barrier cream. Yes, we're going to be using dye. Um, so you do need a barrier cream of some sort and or gloves. Um, we don't use dye with no protection on your hands. Um, it's absorbed through the skin. It's a liquid... Um, it's a liquid medium um, and it will just go through your skin. So um, either use barrier cream. I use both because I get I get so messy. I barrier cream all my arms, every, every bit of exposed skin and I use gloves as well um, just to try and keep myself clean. But one or the other, definitely. Um, and for mixing your dyes, I don't know whether I put this here. I may well not have done. No, you should. But anyway, you should be wearing a mask. Um, you need a particulate mask. And I know I have one in here so that I could always find it. Boom, boom. Yes, well, that, that. Ah, there we are. So you want a particulate mask, which is designed to capture. Um, so unfortunately, your COVID ones are no good. Um, unless you've got a particulate mask for COVID, which you might have. You might have one like this. Um, but you want a particulate mask um, which captures particles of dust. So not a dust mask, but captures particles of dust and um, dye. For, and dye. Um, so just watch out for the mask you're getting. Pencils, rubbers. Um, you know, I've just got a pot of pencils, plenty of and I, a rubber and you want lots of you want black pens. And I always use um, water resistant. Have I put water resistant there? What did I put? Where is it? Water resistant black pen. Yes, definitely. So Sharpies are great. These are the fine Sharpies. I've also got, let's see, I like black pens. I've got um, the clever ones that are fat on one end and thin on the other and then i've got i love these these are i can't see the brands on there i've worn it off uniball uniball i find these are lovely pens too they're water resistant those are that's another uni pen brush one um what's that one that's a uni pen fine line i think that's one of these sets uniball fine line drawing pens um so get yourself some that are water resistant i don't really use water soluble pens um this is something maybe i should get one of but if i ever do it won't be going in this pot that's all my water resistance okay charcoal 
And we're going to be using charcoal, um, which is one of the media that's quite exciting to be able to use on fabric um, and make washable. So, ordinary charcoal like this, this is sea whites again, and this is not an expensive set, and you get a really nice range of colours through from very dark black um, to, <laughs> it is white at the end there, no it doesn't look it, that's just... It's just because it's covered, you know, nice messy stuff, isn't it? Um, and I've also got a nice set. I can't remember how much these are, but I think they're something like three ninety nine um, of sepia colours, which is really nice. The browns, oranges, yellows. So they're lovely sets. Um, sea whites. Um, I don't sell any of this stuff. I sell some of the mediums, um, the ones that I use. Um, and obviously I sell rollers and brushes. Um, but this kind of stuff, the charcoal, um, I think the only mixed media stuff I sell um, is the Neo Colour one. I'll tell you if there's any of the others I have. But I don't have these, but Sea Whites do. And if you go to um, Art Saver, I don't know whether it's .co.uk or .com, but Art Saver, they are a discount shop for Sea White's products, so they may well have these even cheaper. And these are great little sets. They're really good fun to use. So that's just ordinary charcoal. I do somewhere have charcoal pencils. Um, I'm to think where I might have put the charcoal pencils. We'll come back to it when I find them. Um, been organising, and the trouble with organising is, I, you know, I'm just staring around. So I think, oh, I wonder where I did put the charcoal pencils. I thought they were in a little... thought they were in a little... Um, thought they were in a little one of those but anyway they don't seem to be so we'll move we'll move on um these are fabulous these are extra large graphite and my favorite are actually um oh well it doesn't look like they are that's because i've got the lids on wrong oh they're all over the place okay well hang on let's see which are my favorites then because that says i was going to say my favorites are the charcoals because the graphites are a bit harder now that's charcoal they are look they are that's graphite that's graphite that's a charcoal so that says there's a graphite in here I, th I think it might be this one actually which has probably got in here because i love the color so much yeah that's a graphite so obviously i don't use the black charcoal much um but these are wonderful things because these are water soluble. They're really big. These are a bit more expensive. These are made by Derwent. Um, and you might want to wait and see what I'm going to do with them before you indulge in those. Um, but they are lovely. The charcoal one is the one I really, really love. If you're doing breakdown printing with me as well, then these are definitely worth investing in because we're going to use them for that too. Um, baby wipes would be good at this point. But if, we're, if you're just doing mixed media, you might just want to wait and see because you may be happy with just the ordinary charcoal. Okay, so that's them. Um, logically, I was going to say logically next would come chalk pastels. Got a few different types. I've been doing this. You don't need all these different types. I've been doing this. I was thinking about this um, the other night and thinking, well, when did I actually start playing around with mixed media? And I can pinpoint it to after my father died, after my father died, and before I started City and Gills. So sometime between 2004 and 2007, so about 15 years. So I have got a lot of stuff. Now, these are great. These are from the works, inscribed pastels, um, and they're fantastic. You know, they're some of my favourite ones. They're, they're getting worn away. Um, you get a fantastic range of colours. I actually horribly think I might have thrown an even bigger set away at some point. Uh, but they're great and they, 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 these will do you just fine. And again, we're going to use these onto fabric as well as paper and um, make them washable, which is one, excuse me, wonderful, wonderful. You may want, you might want to, like me, take an antihistamine before you get out on all this lot because they make me sneeze, these dusty things. Um, and then this is just another set. These are um, Jackson's um, own brand, Soft Pastels. They're lovely too. I would suggest you look in the works or on somewhere like Amazon um, if you're online and see what they've got because they'll be fine. You don't need expensive chalk pastels for these. I've got a beautiful set from um, Sennelia over there and I very rarely use them. I nearly always use my nice cheap piece. 
excuse me, these ones are by Koinor. Um, Toison d'Or is a brand that is Koinor. You've probably heard of Koinor for the dye palettes, um, which we won't be using, I don't think, in this particular course, but we certainly will in the sketchbooks. Um, but you've probably seen those um, and bought them at Art Van Gogh um, in the past. So this is the same company. Sorry, I'm going to have to find a tissue and itch my nose because what I want to do is I want to lift up my dress and do it with my clothes because <laughs> that is what I would normally do. Might as well just 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 out with it. It is. It's not very nice on camera, is it? Mm. OK, so these ones are and I think these again might be from Sea Whites. So these are Toison d'Or and these are soft pastels as well these are in more of a stick and you can see i don't actually quite use them as much beautiful colors i think the reason is um the other ones would in wrappers and these ones i have to get the wrappers off and i like pastels in little bits like this to use um, and this means with these it means taking off the wrapper and snapping them the only one i've used is that pale blue which is one of my favorite colors and i was running out i think in the other ones um, that i've used a lot but those are really nice um, so you might want to consider those um, they've got some beautiful colors and obviously those you could use on their end more as well and then these ones jaconda which is another koinor brand and again i think this was um jackson's these are ones, these are very similar to the um, Conte uh, crayons that you will see. Um, you know, they're thin and they're called a hard pastel. So they're, they're, I mean, they're not, they're still soft and chalky, but they're not as chalky as the soft ones. So you might fancy having a play with those as well. They'll give you harder, more direct lines. We'll play with all these things and see what they can do. So if you want to just wait till we have that session and then you can have um, a good, you know, you can see what they can do. I think we used to fancy that. Um, so that's the soft pastels and chalky ones. And then there's oil pastels. Um, these ones are <laughs> have been very well used and are a bit of a mess now, to be honest. But these are beautiful, but these are expensive ones. If you really took to using pastels, you might want to consider a set of more expensive oil pastels. Oil pastels definitely... Um, you can tell the difference in pigments between the cheaper and the more expensive. Now, you probably can with the chalk pastels if you're using them for proper chalk pastel-y work. Um, but I can't really see the difference for what I'm using them for. But I certainly can with the pastels, with the oil pastels. So these just have a really whacking pigment load that's really exciting to use. Um, they're Caran d'Ache Neo Pastel. Um, and the other ones I have, again, are Sennelier. But these are also very good. These are Faber Castell, um, and these are perfect. These are good enough. These have a reasonable amount of pigment in them, and again, you can play with these and see what they do, and see how you get on with them. They're not bad, actually. I think I'm trying to remember which of these. I think these ones, the Derwent Academy, um, are the ones with slightly less packing them anything that says something like academy is likely to be being aimed at at education you know schools colleges academies um and they're usually the quality isn't quite as good um but they are cheap um so if you wanted to just try some out you could have a go with those and see what you think i would go personally my advice you know i've got a couple of ones of these because i think i got them for a workshop capturing the place and for sketchbooks and things they would be absolutely fine but if you're wanting to really make um some quite um i'm trying to find somewhere to put this poor white pastel here it's it's a spare it's a spare pen towel pastel which i took on a workshop for doing rubbings there we are um, if you're going to, if you enjoy working with them and think, well, oh, I would like to do more, I would look for mid-range and maybe get, you know, some really nice ones onto your list for Christmas. Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm not very good. <laughs> not very good at keeping things organised. But pastels, you'll, you will realise when I get stuff out. So a lot of my stuff I put in pots and tins so I can get it easily. I tried it with chalk pastels and oil pastels and they become an absolute mess. So don't keep them in their boxes and you will keep them relatively clean and tidy. Okay, Neo Color 1 crayons. 
I have a lot of. Um, I've got a whole tin of them and I've got um, a backup tin over there and I've got another backup tin here. I have loved these for a long, long time. This is one that goes with me in my, um, when I go out sketching so that I can just take the colours that I want with me. Um, so, I so I don't have to, because this is actually quite heavy. Um, these come in 40 different colours plus um, 10 metallics, so 50. It's really annoying. They don't come in as many colours as Neo Colour 2. These are different to Neo Colour 2. They are water resistant. So these we can use as a resist um, with, with, with liquid media. So we can use them um, like a waxy resist, like a candle um, for rubbings and for, uh, for other artwork where we want a resist effect. That's a really nice um, Pablo pencil that Dylan's eaten. I'll put that back in the pencil pot. Um, so you can either buy these they come in these aren't particularly cheap but um you can buy them in tins of 10 um, or tins of 15 tins of 30 and tins of 40 or you can um buy them as individual crayons i don't think we have any of the tins left i think they've all sold but we do sell the individuals at the same price um relative like the tin of 10 um is um i can't remember but we sell the individuals for one pound 50 each which i know is a really good price relative to the tins and we have a lot of different colors so if you wanted to choose half a different different colors that you really liked you could do it that way so that's neo color one um they are an absolute standby in my art practice um i wouldn't be without them there is also and keep these massively separate neo color two which are water soluble crayons and there's other varieties of water soluble crayons neo color two are the best they have a bit of lace in there that's revolting um they have the best pigment load by far um these ones i can't remember what they, what what are, these are called aqua pastels blend dry soluble wax crayon aqua pastels these are okay they've not got a huge amount of pigment in them these ones faber castell aquarelle stick i actually well no that's okay that's not bad that's another option didn't even know i had those to be honest with you i only seem to have the one. Oh no i've got two i've got two. Oh, they're pretty nice actually they're pretty good you can get lots of different types of these water soluble crayons um the only ones that i've had that i didn't much rate and i think i threw them away because i didn't think they had much pigments and I've forgotten what they were called but they were a triangular shape um, and they looked so pretty you know and I, I grabbed them up from Art Van Gogh one time you know I was running out of things to buy and I thought oh I haven't got those I haven't got those um got them um and actually when I compared them to my other water solubles they just haven't got much pigment um so they weren't really a lot of good for me because I'm always looking for a lot of pigment so these this is Neo 2 you can see why you need to keep Neo 2 and Neo 1 apart um, because when you're using them a lot, you're going to have the wrappers off them and they're going to end up in pieces like this. Um, and you won't know whether that is Neo Colour 1 or Neo Colour 2. And ditto, you know, when they're in a bit like that, you, you simply won't know the difference. So keep them separate. I'm looking at that with suspicion because that. Oh, it is water soluble. You can always check, of course, by putting them down and checking. But I just make sure that I keep my water solubles completely separate. So um, a few water soluble crayons and a few um, water resistant crayons we're going to have. And then ditto, we're going to have water soluble pencils. Me playing with these. Um, these are another thing, pencils and crayons. Um, as the price goes up the pigment gets higher um so i've kind of moved to buying the better ones as the years have gone on because you just don't get as good results um but again if you've got some try them use what you've got if you see a fabulous bargain try them out but just have that in your head some things it doesn't seem to make any difference some things it seems to make a lot of difference so i think i don't know how many different types i've got in here i've sort of again i bought these mostly as singles 
and then um, added them up. That looks like Caran d'Ache. I love Caran d'Ache products. Um, they make the Neo Colours um, and they make Pablo pencils that I really love. This is Caran d'Ache Super Colour. Um, that one is the same. Same. Okay, I'm sure I've got other brands in here. Um, because I didn't know what I did, wouldn't have known what I was looking at when I first bought. There's that's a different brand. Look, that's Derwent, a Derwent watercolor. Now that's a nice color, but I know that does not have anything like as much pigment as these Caran d'Ache ones. And then these ones are beautiful. These are Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle. Um, they're another really highly pigmented one. And then I think. I have some inscribed ones yeah inscribed no that's too color i think i did and i think i threw them away because i just thought these are just irritating because they just haven't got enough in them so but as i say try what you've got um that seems to be so i've got derwent um and two different types of caran d'ache in there um try what you've got and see what it does if you're not getting a good result always consider if you're using a cheap product think about the product and think about whether it's likely to be a product that price makes a difference most things with pigment price makes difference because pigments are expensive so paints pencils crayons um pigment seems to make a difference and it does with the chalk pastels and the oil pastels as i say the chalk pastels though i just can't really notice much difference for what i'm doing that's no doubt me and then this lot here are my water resistant i have a lot more water resistant crayons and pencils than i do water soluble just because i find them so useful because they will resist against wet media um, and i use them a lot um, on at the end of my work when i've made a quilt or a textile piece or a paper piece and i want to tweak colors i can use crayons and pencils to do that um, and as long as they're water resistant i don't need to worry about them running if the piece gets wet or in my case when I seal it because I seal everything at the end so I think I've got three types in here my favorite are Caran d'Ache Pablo they're beautiful beautiful pencils very chalky um, and then the other two that I have that are both also good I don't think they're quite as good as Pablo um, <clears throat> but they are good polychromos um, a lovely pencil got a nice pigment it's just not as soft as the pablo i don't think but polychromos sorry that's um who makes polychromos come on come on come on faber castell faber castell and then the other ones that are quite nice some of you might have these are prismacolor um and these are lovely pencils but they're really hard to sharpen this and they're so soft they're beautiful to use but they're really hard to sharpen you can sharpen away half a pencil trying to get it sharp and bearing in mind these pencils can be a couple of pounds each um you don't want to be sharpening half the pencil away so i would recommend um if you're investing and going to stock up on good quality again the good quality ones mean that i can use these um on final pieces of work and really have um a lot of impact i've forgotten what i was doing but i was doing something recently um, and using the pencils and really you know making a huge difference um, with them um, so those are the two I would recommend but there's loads of pencils around so you know highlight you've got some try what you've got uh, and then if you really enjoy what we're doing you could think about again asking for them for Christmas or for birthday presents or buy them one at a time I don't think any of those I've bought in sets oh yes I did I bought the polychromos in sets but the others I've all bought as individual pencils just buying colors I want you know so if I was in the art shop uh, this is in the old days when you went to shops um, if I was in the art shop getting whatever I was getting probably fabric paint um i would buy myself you know a couple of pencils three pencils um just and just build up my collection that way um okay paint and ink dabbers where are they okay yeah these are the tim holtz ones or the ranger ones and these are very good you don't need loads of these um but these are they're just they're just expensive they're about five pounds a pot um so they're not a cheap option but if you bought yourself two or three in colors you like to play with um and see how you get on with them 
these are all really good. Um, what is even better, though, I think, is this, which are empty dabbers. Okay, so this is an empty dabber. It's just a plastic pot with a spongy top. Um, and these just allow us to apply medium, apply our media direct from a tube instead of with a brush. Um, they're brilliant for um, sketchbooks, for when you're out, for a sketchbook kit. Um, and these ones I've got, and I am filling with my own dye. So that's pale grey. That's midnight blue. That's bluebell. I haven't got them all done yet. So that's key lime ink of gold all my favorite colors and these then just let's get one that you'll see these just mean you can put your die out like that so they're very easy and over my pencils and crayons here i've just got a little bit i should be able to put it over well that depends really whether they were water soluble no nope, they're coming through and i can do that over those and there's no oh yes one of the water solubles some of that was water soluble and it did run um so they're really brilliant these empty ones um they're not i i finally found some and they're still not massively cheap but they are cheaper than buying um the tim holtz ones and it means you know if you've got um paints and dyes already you can just make them a bit extra and add them into these if you want to put paint in these you need to water it or if you're putting my paint in these anyway um or set a color you're going to need at least 50 percent water in there to get that to come out through the sponge because it's very viscous um luckily it's very pigmented so you'll still get the color i'm just trying to see i thought i had a blue one with some paint in it of course that could be it. What's that? Oh, that might be. There we are. That's periwinkle paint. And you can see it's still pretty, pretty dense colour in there. But that is taken down with 50% water. So for me, I'm sort of slowly building up to having all my paints and dyes and dabbers as well as um, ordinary pots think that's a really good way to have them the other nice way to have your dies um probably more for sketchbooks than for what we're going to be doing is in a little spray bottle so those are i think starting from scratch the better option um because you can use the paints and dyes you've already got and then last but not least hang on i've missed something here Water soluble pastels, paint sticks, and gelatos. Right, I was going to say, looking at this pile here and thinking these need mentioning. Okay, these are gelatos. This is where I sort of started my journey with water soluble um, things. These are like lipsticks. Um, beautiful, really rich colours. I still love gelatos a bit. Unfortunately, they've become really expensive to buy and quite hard to get hold of, I have found. Um, certainly the suppliers I have bought them through in the past no longer do all the colours I want. Um, so I started looking around for other options. But if you've got gelatos, they're going to be fantastic, really good and great fun to play with. Other options... options how joyous hey um now out of all of these i've got lots of different ones in here that i'm trialing and some i think are better than others okay so if something like these um which i just called play color art a, a gouache solid paint this is fine um it's nice but i don't think the pigment mm, actually that looks to have quite quite a good pigment load on it now um having said that um so perhaps i'll take that back perhaps those are fine um this is a little 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 brain paint sticks these are quite nice as well and those have metallic ones and plain ones those are a bit more i would say a little less pigment but still nice um these are fabulous 
and I can't pronounce what these are called, but they're a German brand and you can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link into your group. Um, these are great. I absolutely love these. These work really well. Lots of pigment. Brilliant for what we're doing. And again, if you're doing breakdown printing with me, these are brilliant on the screen. And the other ones that I really like are these, which are called Craft Planet. Um, and these are the only ones that I actually um, have to sell. I've, I've stopped buying gelatos because I just think that they're, they're price prohibitive for me now. Um, these ones called Craft Planet. And these, again, have a really good um, thick pigment load in them all of these are water soluble oh another one that i found that i think is quite nice is these are called um jane davenport these were from hobbycraft i um, they weren't particularly cheap i have to say um, and that really annoys me because one of them doesn't work so i can't get it so i'm gonna have to shake it out of here somehow but the colors were rather nice um the colors are nice so i think i think they're nice too i, I don't think they're brilliant value for money but i did think she had some nice colors and that one you know at least the stick works there i think there was a really nice dark brown in these that i thought was gorgeous this one was it this one looks like this one that looks like a dark brown look at that you see i think that's just a delicious delicious color um so just a small collection or selection of those to play with and again you may well have some of these or the gelatos already and then you can see what we're going to do and if you get addicted you can think oh yeah i'll get myself some more of those um and that oh no one more thing one more thing that i'll be showing you is these behave yourself these whoa these are metallic waxes um i've got two different types i've got uh metallic luster um and i've recently started buying the anchor gold um because th those have shot up in price things in things during um lockdown the prices have gone very very odd um but these ones um anchor gold every bit is nice um and work just the same so these are water based um so these are a bit similar to something like treasure gold um but they're water based a treasure gold um i don't like the smell of and it never never seems to dry off for me whereas these these do these these will dry on whatever i'm using them um a sort of 24 hours and they've cured um so i really really like these um and we can all you can also use them because they're water soluble you can use them as um, a paint as well. And I'll show you how to do that. Here, look at that. What a colour. What a colour, she says, and just needs to. That looks very nice with my key lime bit of dye down there, doesn't it? Just, just joyous. Just joyous. So each week as we use these different things, I will go through the different products and tell you how they work. In different ways you can use them but that's sort of well, that's an overview of the whole course as i say you don't need everything um if money's tight just wait watch enjoy the course and then think okay i really fancy having a go with that i'm going to do that see what your friends have got that you can borrow to try out um lots of us will have loads of these sort of things and if you don't have the particular ones i've got you may well have something that's very similar in which case use that and try it um there's nothing that i've got here that we can do any harm to ourselves with it's all all water-based um apart from the oil pastels um so it, it it's fairly easy to use stuff and you can try it out and just see see where you see where you go with it um and see if other things um if there's anything we're going to do that might harm or damage something you've got and the only thing i can think of is the screen and that will become more so with breakdown printing than with what we're doing because we're only going to use a couple of products through the screen but you know you can clog up screens with the wrong media um, so you need to be a bit careful there um but other than that um i would say no worries at all so i hope that's been helpful 
has got me excited about the course, um, which is in just a few weeks. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing you all there. Um, and I'm going to turn this off, clear the table and do the same thing now for breakdown printing. All right. I'll see you all in. Oh, great big cleavage job. See you all in um, a few weeks. Bye now. Bye. Me again. Quick bit of extra that I completely forgot. And, you know, I don't think they're on your requirements list. I will check because I was reading down that and I don't think I came across them. Now, I might not have seen them. Um, but just in case I didn't, I will put them in a letter to you. I will remind you at the beginning of the course. But and they are basic fundamentals. Um, but we will almost certainly be using them. Gel matte medium of some sort. I like the um, Peveo brand. Um, this is the Studio um, Gel. It's a nice mid viscosity. Um, we can use it for sealing. We can mix it with paints to make them more transparent. Um, and we use it for lots of things. So that's a really useful one. Um, acrylic wax. Um, I like the Ultra Matte particularly. Um, it's virtually invisible. Again, we can use it for sealing things and we can use it for mixing into some of the water soluble media. And I would also have some gesso. Um, this is a white gesso, again, Pebeo brand. This is a nice mid um, thickness. It won't completely obliterate something in one layer, but you can build up the layers. And I also have the black gesso, um, which I really like using as well. So just to recap, it's basically, these are the acrylic mediums. So we talked about the printing mediums, um, but this is a gel matte medium and some acrylic wax. Those are clear ones. And then um, a white gesso. And if you fancy to treat a black gesso, you could, of course, just use black paint. So I will add that on to the end of your video um, and I will put it in a letter to you as well. OK, bye now. Bye.